What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this one, we'll be discussing exciting new features with Twitch, how you can get them, and more. Twitch has just announced and started implementing multiple encodes and enhanced broadcasting on Twitch. Things are changing for not just Twitch, but the streaming landscape as a whole, and this is actually pretty exciting. What is enhanced broadcasting? Well, in the description down below, you'll find the Twitch article telling you everything you need to know about it. Essentially, enhanced broadcasting with multiple encodes is a feature that's built directly into OBS Studio and the Twitch video system for the beta. The current Twitch-specific beta build includes support for multiple client-side encodes, similar to transcodes, and automatic stream configuration. These are the two brand new features currently in testing that are actually really exciting. The first benefits more Twitch than most of the Twitch partnered creators by lessening their load on converting videos, etc. But if you're someone who's not a partner on Twitch, now you can get access to different qualities simply because you're transcoding them and uploading different qualities, be it 480, 720, 1080, etc. from your PC to Twitch, and they're just pumping it out to everyone. That's pretty much what the multiple client-side encodes is. Transcoding is a process of converting multiple video qualities from your high-quality streamed content. This allows people with lesser network conditions or older devices to watch it as they please using less data and processing power for less buffering. For the most part, Twitch does this currently. You upload a stream that's maybe 2K and Twitch will create 1080, 720, 480, etc. That'll take a few seconds and they'll distribute it across the globe. Now, if you choose to enable multiple client-side encodes, your PC and graphics card in particular creates all of these different streams, uploads all of them, meaning that your stream should get to viewers a bit faster, so there's less time transcoding, less of a delay, and of course, you get to control how good it looks if you have powerful hardware to support that. This is pretty exciting, and we've yet to see how good it is for already partnered creators who have that quality selection anyway, but for Twitch streamers who aren't partnered, or choose not to partner, using a feature like this allows you to get the quality picker without actually needing to get partnered or get lucky. Then, automatic stream configuration. This is also pretty exciting. The first time that you install OBS and fire it up, it tells you what you want to do, stream or record, and it tests a few things to try and get it to look as good as possible using their general suggestions. This one, however, is set up by Twitch and essentially looks at your GPU, CPU network, etc. to Twitch or Twitch's servers and a server-side algorithm then says the best possible configuration for OBS Studio and it's sent across to your PC. That way, you simply just click Click one button and it'll experiment with higher bit rates, better quality, 2K, 4K streaming, etc., and even new codecs like AV1 and HEVC. Simply just clicking one button, taking a minute or two to test things, and getting optimized stream settings for your particular PC and network situation is actually really good, especially for people just starting out on Twitch or those who want to make their stream perform a bit better. Who knows if this will be super basic or super in depth when it comes to tweaking different things? We've yet to see that, but for the most part, this is a good feature and it's great to have. Finally, at the very bottom, AV1. Currently, it's not supported, but they're working on experimenting with AV1 support, which means much better looking streams and less bandwidth to stream to Twitch. Platforms like YouTube already support Hevic and AVC, but now Twitch working on offering this is great, even though it'll only currently be available to NVIDIA RTX 40 users. How do you actually get access to this beta? Well, over here you can see getting started. As soon as you head across to your dashboard, Twitch TV slash broadcast, you'll see this pop-up at the very top, or rather this pop-up. Simply look on the right-hand side for the request early access button, click this, and it'll request access. That's it. When you're granted access to this brand new feature, you'll be emailed and it's being rolled out on a first come first serve basis. So the sooner you head to the links in the description down below, the more time you can save and hopefully the sooner you can get access to these exciting features. They will be supporting guaranteed encodes for partners. This just allows partners to have more granular control over quality, bit rate, etc. And those who aren't partnered to get the different quality settings on their stream, assuming they transcode it themselves rather than relying on luck. They're working on making it more broadly available. And of course, it is a beta, so if things don't perform as expected, they are working on it. Do you have to download a special version of OBS? 
Well, they're working with the OBS project and the open source community to bring features directly to OBS Studio. So for the most part, I would only expect you to need to upgrade OBS Studio when you get the pop-up saying, hey, there's an update. If you'd like to check for an update in OBS, head across to it, click help at the very top and choose check for updates. That's it. Assuming there are updates, you'll get a pop-up saying install or download, and following through with it, you'll probably have access to these features. If we check the OBS forms in the forms development test build section, there currently isn't anything here, but if for some reason they do roll it out via test builds, you'll find downloads for it here. More than likely, it'll be a normal update for OBS Studio, adding these features when they're ready for everyone. Further on, system requirements. During the beta, an NVIDIA GPU is required and Windows 11 is recommended. And they also recommend that you have the newest publicly available OBS Studio installed, which I just showed you. If anything wrong happens, you can fall back to a known version. What won't work during the beta? Simulcasting and restreaming. They use a new enhanced RTMP protocol and third-party video platforms that relay your RTM video streams won't work initially with this. So that includes restream and things like that until they work around updating their things to get it to work with this as you're uploading multiple video streams at once, similar to how you can upload multiple audio streams currently to get a different VOD audio track. You can read more information about the development of enhanced RTP and even get in touch if you're developing a third-party video tool or platform. Then, automatic stream configuration optimizes for viewer experience, which is important, and it makes intelligent decisions based on the size of your screen, hardware, etc. If we scroll down a bit further, you'll see that joining the beta program gives you a chance to be among the first live streamers in history that use AV1 encoding. This is pretty exciting as on Twitch, they're busy working on this. And if you were to join this beta now, you could probably get access to this hopefully sometime soon. They're not currently planning on supporting HDR and 10-bit video or FPS higher than 60, but they'll explore this in the future, possibly. And in this section here, you'll see that Twitch is currently working on changing their bitrate recommendations and settings to allow multiple video streams. Then how much of your PC is used for multiple encoders. And for the most part on modern GPUs, you won't really notice a difference. The extra GPU overhead introduced by encoding multiple video qualities is trivial and alpha testers, meaning those who test it before us now, played some of the most latency sensitive games as far back as the GeForce 900 series and didn't feel any impact to game performance. You can let them know if there's any issues using the enhanced broadcasting beta community discord, which you can find here. There we go. Finally, what NVIDIA GPUs will be supported by enhanced broadcasting? And they say everything as far back as the GeForce 900, which is great. And to see if your NVIDIA GPU has an NVIDIA encoder, check the table they have linked here. So looking at this table and expanding encoding, we'll see all of the GPUs that currently support video encoding, as well as the max number of concurrent sessions, as in how many video streams they can make at once. For most consumer GPUs, that is five. So technically you should be able to create five different qualities or streams of whatever you're recording slash streaming and send them off to Twitch. Although currently I think they're only gonna be working with three for now at least. Anyways, this is a huge turning point for streaming and game streaming. It's very exciting and it's great to give more control to the creator and of course improve how things look for viewers in particular. So this is pretty much great all around. That being said, as soon as you apply, you'll still need to wait for an invite for the program. So just keep an eye on your email and or of course the Discord as well. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.